the start. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. So today we're continuing on in our Jane and John Doe series of basically unsolved Doe's cases. And this one we're going to be talking about is something that I actually talked about roughly in a previous video. And we are going to be talking about the Eklutna Annie case. Um, so we already know who killed her and that was Robert Hansen or the Butcher Baker. I'll put that video in a card somewhere uh, during this video. That way you can watch that video. You don't have to watch that before watching this. You can watch this before that. It's all up to you. I will discuss Robert Hansen a little bit in this, but this is mainly about Eklutna Annie. So, on the 24th, 21st of July of 1980, workmen discovered skeletal remains. And her this set of skeletal remains that was found was burned in a shallow grave. This was alongside a series of power lines. So, the death of this person was determined to have occurred months prior to this. It was determined that the skeleton was of female origin. Uh, she was she she was found with articles of clothing. She wore a brown leather hip length jacket, light colored shirt, blue jeans, and red knee high heels. And these were boots. A box of Salem matches were found in her coat pocket. Um, they think she was a smoker, but there was no tobacco found on her, just the matches. She had several pieces of jewelry on her body, um, including a small metal bracelet that had three turquoise stones on them, a necklace with a shell bead, and a pendant heart. She also had a Timex wristwatch and twisted metal hoop earrings. So she really liked to dress herself up. I mean, she already has her, she has her boots and her hip length coat, then add the jewelry. She probably well took care of herself to make sure that people found her in an attractive way. She was petite and she was of Native American lineage and possibly had light brown hair or strawberry blonde hair. That was not fully determined. So what they did determine is that she approximately would be born between 1954 and 1963 and that her age was anywhere between 16 to 25. Her date of death is there. It's a wide range because obviously she was found in July of 1980 and she was of skeletal remains. It really depends on what the weather is like in the area, the manner of cause of death, like the actual deterioration of her body. But since it was skeletal remains, she's been there a while. So they d concluded that her time of death or her day of death is anywhere between November 1979 to June of 1980. That way there is a broader range. And it was also determined that she was stabbed to death. And her name was given to her due to the fact that she was found in Eklutna, which is in Anchorage, Alaska. And her height is anywhere between 4'11 to 5'3. So she was very petite in size. So they find her and nothing really comes of finding her. There's no leads, There's they don't know who she is, they don't know how she, like, they know she was stabbed to death, but they don't know who. Well, when Robert Hansen is arrested, he admits to her murder in 1984, so this is four years after she's discovered, and according to him, she wore a brown leather coat which we talked about, blue jeans and a sweater. He couldn't really remember whether she was a dancer or a prostitute, but he believed that she's from Kodiak, Alaska. He would later say that he picked her up uh, downtown and told her he was going to take her to his house. However, he would describe the drive, and when he did, it's... Annie... You could tell she tried to defend herself. So 
when she realized that he wasn't taking her to his house, um, she asked him to drive back to Anchorage and he unset, like unsuccessfully told her to like, and to convince her that everything was fine. They were going to his house and he was driving to a safe location and just a little bit further from where they were. And this is when she exclaimed, well, I'm not. And he attempted to placate her, but ultimately he drew a gun on her and he told her, you do exactly as I say, and you won't get hurt. So he then drove to Eklutna Lake. His vehicle veered towards a muddy swamp area and he persuaded her to help him uh, winch his pickup to try and get it out of the mud. This is when she attempted to run and he chased her down. He grabbed her and tripped her onto the ground. She struggled hardcore. She struggled, struggled to get away. And this is from Robert Hansen's words, is that she tried very hard to get away from him. And he overpowered her. And she screamed, don't kill me. He attempted to like claim he wouldn't kill her. And she didn't believe him, which is good that she didn't believe him because he then would stab her in the back. This is after she like, he got her down on the ground. He tripped her. And after their struggle, she ends up face down onto the ground. He stabs her in the back with a black handled buck knife. And she was face down. So in 1984, her death was concluded as Robert Hansen's first murder. And added, he added that she was killed in the fall or early winter of 1979. So that basically sums up November of 1979 is when it's believed that she died. So they don't, they don't know who she is. Still to this day, they have no idea who she is, but they do know that Robert Hansen did murder her. So I hope that they were able to extract DNA from her, or if they exhume her skele her skeleton or what is left of her skeleton, do extract DNA to help her family get closure, especially if she's been missing for this whole time and they still have no answers when it comes to her. So that is the story of Eklatna Annie. <sighs> Again, this is kind of a weird solved Jane Doe case because we don't know who she is, but we know who killed her. But I hope you guys enjoyed and don't forget to add a comment below if there is a crime that or a case that you want me to cover, whether it's murder or if it's a disappearance, I will cover it. And I'll see you guys in my next true crime case. Bye you guys. Stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away. Show